But the soul has uh, definitely exceeded all expectations. I mean, just look at the numbers. Back in 2009, we sold 31,000. And I think in Miami, we said, oh, we'll probably sell 40 to 50,000 of these per year. Last year, we sold 115,000 souls. And probably could have sold more, but we were constrained from a capacity standpoint. It is a, a, a global vehicle. Uh, the U.S. by far is the, the, the largest market, but this vehicle is sold throughout the world. So uh, and capacity is always an issue. Uh, for 2013, uh, we expect that uh, Seoul will continue to uh, do it probably as well as it did uh, last year, about 112,000 or 115,000 units. Um, but it's still wildly popular, and this is in spite of its age. If you think about it, Seoul was introduced in 2009. It's now 2013. Did a minor uh, fresh back in 2011. Normally, when a vehicle ages, you start to see vehicle sales decline. In this case, the Seoul has done anything but that. The, uh, the sales continue to increase. It's, uh, this year will be our number two selling vehicle. Last year it was number three. Sorento was number two. They kind of flipped back and forth between the two. Optima is still uh, our number one selling vehicle. But it is a core vehicle to us. It's very important uh, to our brand, not just from a volume standpoint, but from an overall image standpoint as well. Um, and it's also one of the fastest turners in the industry. As a brand, we turn uh, our uh, inventory, 42% uh, of our inventory every month, uh, leading the industry. Seoul, uh, we turn about 49%. So pretty impressive there. Uh, it shows, again, the popularity. And it's uh, attracting consumers from many different segments. So it's always been difficult for us to position the Seoul. And, you know, initially, we positioned it against the other boxy uh, vehicles. <coughs> Uh, it had kind of its own segment, but since then, many of those vehicles have uh, gone by the wayside, and we're now seeing people come from many different segments. Uh, compact MPV, compact car, midsize car, compact SUV, and midsize SUV as well. All right, and the mix has moved up uh, as well. Uh, you can see it here that the Soul. Uh, uh, average incentive is about $1,235. This is August data. We don't have uh, September data yet. Um, so versus the, the competition that I mentioned earlier where we were attracting uh, consumers from. And then if you look over here, the mix has changed as well. There's a uh, little, well, here we go. Back in 2009, this was uh, the base price, the, uh, the sole manual transmission. Sold a lot of vehicles right here in about the $17,000 price range. 2013, uh, manual transmission right about here. Uh, mix uh, our volume vehicles selling now around the set high 17, 18,000, but even now stretching up into uh, over $20,000. So uh, we've definitely extended uh, the, uh, the price points of the vehicle as, as more and more consumers uh, come in and, and want a lot more things with the Soul. And Orth will talk about that. Uh, in a little bit. All right, so, uh, back in 2009 when we introduced the Soul, uh, the residual came in at 56. It was the highest residual ever for a Kia product. And look where we were as a brand, we were at 38. Over the last couple of years, uh, from a brand standpoint, our average residual is now 48%. For the 2014 Soul, it's now at 58%. So great progress there. Um, and again, it just shows that uh, low incentives, high demand, great brand awareness, uh, very exciting, very uh, low fleet uh, as well on this vehicle. All right, as I mentioned earlier, we had uh, a lot of priorities when we introduced the Soul back in uh, 2009. Uh, we needed to make Kia relevant in the top 20 markets. We've done that. We saw that by uh, the growth uh, being about 300% in the top 20 markets. Uh, we needed to grow sales and market share. We were at 1.9% in uh, 2008, the end of. Uh, at the end of 2012, we were about uh, 385 So uh, we've done that. And then uh, we also needed to introduce new customers to Kia. And uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, we feel we've definitely attracted many new customers, not just for the Soul, but for the overall brand in and of itself. And then, of course, we needed to strengthen the brand and make it more competitive. And we saw that uh, 
through sales and uh, through residuals. So uh, we feel pretty good about what the soul has uh, enabled us to do as a brand. Uh, the question for you now, of, of course, is, well, where do you go from here uh, with this product? Uh, so good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.